Good afternoon, good evening, or wherever you're listening to us, however you're listening to us. It is another season of the Leitrim GA podcast here on FinalWhistle.ie. Of course, the club season all kicks off this weekend in earnest. We've had the Spring League as a bit of a warm-up, and now for the next few months, right through to October, we're going to have a weekly show here on the pod, on the, the platform talking about all things club football in Leitrim GA. But it is the Masonite All-County Football League that kicks off tonight in earnest with the arrival of Drummer Hare to Ballon Aguilera in uh, the only Friday night fixture of the weekend. I'm going to be chatting to Darren Mulvey uh, in just a few moments about all things uh, League Two football uh, over the next few days. And uh, I suppose it's a good opportunity to bring him into the show. Darren, you're very welcome uh, to a new season for club football in County Leitrim. I know you've been busy yourself being involved in the Spring League with Port Lettra, but it really does all kick off this weekend. Yeah, um, thanks, Breff. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Uh, yeah, kind of as you said, uh, kicking off in earnest um, this weekend. I know a lot of maybe counties closest would have been playing league sands county players for the last maybe up in a month now. We've had our spring league, so yeah, there there's a real feeling, you know, with the with the with the good weather lately and and the ground starting to firm up that it's uh, the club the club season is really getting off now, uh, getting off get, getting off all the blocks this weekend. Yeah, for sure. Speaking about uh, ground firming up, you're obviously Gortletra man yourself. There's some uh, nice new developments over in Gortletra starting to come to fruition. How are things on the the ground situation in that club? Yeah, brilliant. Um, well, all things going well. We hope to have our our new our new pitch open for um, well, certainly by later in the summer, and and hopefully for the first round of the club for the, for the club we'll be playing club championship games at home on it. Yeah, look, but it's a it's it's a long time coming. It's 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 probably a project that's been in gestation since the mid two thousands in terms of even buying the land that's there. But um, a lot of hard work has gone in through a, a lot of. A, a lot of volunteers, a, a lot of a lot of a lot of time, a lot of hours has gone into it over 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 the intervening period. But no, we're going to have a a, a really good a really good facility there that, that hopefully every, everyone in, in the in the parish and connected to the club can be proud of and will get great use out of down the line. And yeah, look, it, it's great. It's it's, it's exciting. The surface is looking good. Um, we're hoping to get goals and ball stops up now in the next couple of weeks and um, just a bit of tidying up around it and we should be good to go. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's a really exciting time. I have to say. It's always an exciting time when you see new developments like that in any club. So the best luck to everyone in Gort Letra. I know it's a huge effort going in, as you mentioned, uh, through a variety of people over the last couple of decades, maybe, in terms of all of that. Uh, let's focus on the county football. Let's get that done and dusted at the top of the show. You were in Cardigan Park last weekend. Um, your thoughts on the game? Yeah, um, look what I suppose. It was a game that, really, that Leeds would have really liked to win. Um, and... You know, speaking any more and afterwards, it, it was kind of you know, same old story for one of a, be- a better expression. You know, we each made some really good goal chances in the first half. Um, you know, Antrim keeper Michael Byrne made some really good saves, and they like, each them go back. They go in two points down at the break. Antrim start the better the second half. They pushed out to four. We could get a goal back. Really good move. Jack Heston at the back post, and it's back at one point. And then Antrim just seemed to ratchet it up a couple of gears. And like you know, Leitrim, you know, keep Byrne certainly didn't seem to be one hundred percent. You know, he's taken off in the second half. Looked like he was carrying his left leg a bit. You know, definitely a couple of injuries to depth, key depth guys there. And um, I suppose it, it's a test of the panel now. This Talchin Cup, you know, in terms of what Andy Moore has been trying to build, and in terms of you know, can they can can, can they lift it up now and try and drive on and get some good performances over over the, over the next couple of games? Like like Leitrim do play very well at home. They've had re, they have a good home record. You know, under Andy Moore, and even in, in general, even go back to Terry Highland's time, we had a great record at home. So you'd be hoping that that will count for something. Um, tomorrow night against Fermanagh and then of course like even if tomorrow night doesn't go our way you know it's it's looking that it could quite possibly be you know Wexford versus Leitrim and that could be a, a straight shootout for that third place regardless of what happens in uh, um, you know well actually no Leitrim would have to uh, well if Wexford lose to Antrim on, on, on Saturday as well you know it could it'd be a case of Leitrim versus uh, Wexford and the, third, the winner goes straight up so that's 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 one eventuality but um, no certainly look we're, we're definitely going to have to look at trying to convert more of our sporting opportunities that's something that Leitrim are really going to have to look at um, hopefully you know having a man at home is going to give them a chance to do that but um, yeah no definitely um, you know Andy Moore did say you know the, the, panel is, the panel is there no one's walked away and, and that's good and that's kind of I've heard a lot of different inter-county managers in the Talton Cup saying that Andy McEntee had said something similar Paddy Christie the same there in Longford so that maybe speaks to the to the to the how worthwhile the Talton Cup is in ter- uh, for, for you know your division three and four counties so that's another positive too but um make no mistake about it Breffney Leachin would have liked to get a result last weekend you know it didn't work out that way 
and they're going to have to try and lift themselves now on a short turnaround for, uh, for a really good team in Fermanagh coming down now tomorrow. Yeah, how much can we read into the the, tur- the swing in the scoreline? We played Antrim in the same competition last year. Now, they were under strength last year, let's be honest about it. The, the issues you spoke about, players walking away, players didn't get involved in, in Antrim in the Talton Cup last year. Uh, they did this year, and we went from a comfortable win to a reasonably comfortable defeat in the end on the scoreboard at least. Uh, does that say more about Antrim than it does about Leitrim? Should we be concerned? Um probably does say more about Antrim and that's something that Andy McEntee mentioned to me after the game as well and that you know that you know there was a lot of guys got back and, and for in some cases some of the lads there that was playing you know for Antrim it was their first game back in a while because they had been part of the panel but just hadn't been up to the level of condition that would warrant them getting the game in the league like you know so like that probably does speak more to what's happening up in Antrim than it does what's happening in, in Leitrim like you know look at um you know I, I think a win would have been very would have been great last weekend even just to kind of Draw a line under the championship, uh, you know the, the 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 game in New York and that. But even still, you know, I, I think it does probably say more about Antrim, like Leitrim. We know what's there. We know the, the depth of the panel that we have. And of course, you got to remember too, like it, it swings around almost the other way. Leitrim have lost players from last year, primarily through injury, you know, and a couple of guys going you no know, heading away traveling. Like if you even just a, a quick straw pull off the top of my head, you're missing, you know, the two Cullens, David Bruin, you know, Jordan Reynolds, you know, they, they, these guys for travel or injury are, are all, you know, absent at the minute, and like. Leitrim can't sustain player turnover at that level and Antrim to be honest probably can't either and that's just where it goes so it's probably swung both ways Antrim have got a lot of guys back you know Andy Andy McEntee's in there you know a new manager bounce Leitrim you know have been unfortunate with injuries you know and like I said you've got Ryan O'Rourke there as well another long term absentee who courses a marquee forward like at, at any level especially Division 4 you take guys you know the calibre of Jordan Reynolds and Ryan O'Rourke out of your team and your, your scoring power is going to take a hit so that's just you know the, the facts of life. That, that's what the guys have to deal with, like you know, and and I suppose they, they probably are dealing with that. I no doubt they're working. They're working very hard to try and rectify that. So hopefully it can it can um, it can turn around now. Like you know, for Mana, even that game aside, the Wexford game is a game a game that you know a team that we know that we that, that the lads probably know that they can beat. Uh, you know, given the fact that they were they had a they, they were well they were they were well up in them in, in in the league and just you know. Wexford kind of seemed to have found a bit of a scoring burst in the last 15 minutes and, and, and that, that was the win of that game but Leitrim know they can compete with Wexford they probably are relishing the chance of having a cut for Mana. there's never too much between Leitrim and Fermanagh when they play you know they'd be very similar county size wise demographic wise so that law be factored into their heads I presume that they'd be, be, they'd be looking to vote and have a right cut off them uh, yeah, tomorrow yeah. evening Absolutely, and the st- those two chances you've spoken about, Fermanagh and Wexford, neither in still fear which is good going into the, the games I know they're both probably ranked higher than us uh, in league form over the last couple of seasons, Wexford were not that far off um, year on year, but um, you you go into both games expecting to give them a decent crack. S- switching our focus for a moment, of course, the ladies lost their uh, third three in a row attempt against Roscommon in the the intermediate championship final in Connacht. Uh, it's hard to read into that. It's kind of a nothing competition in some respects. There's only two teams properly in the competition. I know we played fixtures against Sligo, but they are technically a junior side. Um, they went to the All Ireland Championship in a couple of weeks. Uh, have you been following the women's stuff? Um, what's your thoughts on on them and in terms of where they are this season? Yeah, no, look at it absolutely. It was that was uh, com- was done? We were commentating. We we had live coverage to the league final um, and on a couple of game, a couple of their games in the league as well. Of course, on on radio and yeah, look at they were they they, they, they done very well to get to the league final. I know. Like uh, even just from talking to the players in the group, like that's a big tagger for them to try and win that league and g- get out of division, uh, you know, get out of that division. Like and and they've come very close in the last couple of years, but they just haven't been able to get over the line in finals. So they ran into a very good Antrim side that day up in Parnell Park. And um, as you said, it's hard to read into the Connacht Championship for them because with the way the, the ladies' football grading, they're it's only Roscommon and Leitrim are intermediate sides, and Leitrim had got the better of them the last two years in a row in in, in one off games. And I suppose you no know, Johnny Gardy is dealing with something similar to what Andy Moore is dealing with in terms of you know player turnover. There, there's a couple, there's there's players that aren't involved for one reason or another, and it's probably forced to kind of a you know. A, you know, Leach, the, Johnny Gardy and his management to cast the net wider, bring in a lot of younger players, and, and you, you've seen that there in that Leach side with the likes of, you know, just off the top of my head, the likes of Jasmine Bray or Jasmine Jasmine May, sorry, uh, the two Bruins, you know, starting to carve out places for themselves in that team. And look, at the, I suppose the downside of it is now that you know, as a result of Leach being the kind of runners up, they're going into a three group, a three team group, and the All Ireland Intermediate Championship was supposed to be a four team group, so they're going to have to work that little bit harder um, to get out of it. You might think it'd be easier, but you're going to be in against good teams there, like the the, the Leinster winners, which are li- li- likely to be Kildare, um, are going to be in that group at Leitrim. So there's going to be the, the, there'll be some tough games ahead for that for that Leitrim side in the championship, but like that, the 
there'll, there'll be games that, that, that'll bring them on. And I wouldn't I wouldn't be betting against Leach Mays getting out of that group in the championship in any stretch of the imagination. They do have the firepower up front. They're starting to develop, you know, uh, what I would call secondary and tertiary scoring behind Michelle Gokin with the likes of Leah Fox, Alba Glancy, you know, and that's very important for any side to have. But, um, you know, you'd be hoping that they can go on and, and drive on now in the back of the league, put their league disappointment behind them and, uh, you know, push on to the championship. The Miners, of course, out tonight as well. Uh, they travel to Sligo, Marcus Park, 7 o'clock, kick it off. That game is live on, uh, I think it's on the Connacht the GA website. You'll get the details of that, but you can watch the game. Um, they've had a pretty good season in terms of performances. Maybe it hasn't reflected in terms of actual results, only the one draw in the competition. But um, it's a consistency we probably haven't seen at minor level in the last couple of decades for Leitrim where they're competitive against every single team. We've seen flashes where we've won a game or, or had a good performance in one or two games through a competition, but to be consistent through all four games in the, in the league phase is really a step forward for Leitrim. Do you, would you agree? I would, yeah, but with the caveat that, you know, and this is something Andy Moore has said before too, at what point are, moral victories and pyrrhic victories you know not enough anymore and like in fairness that that minor side that's there at the minute you know they've, they've managed to retain a lot of guys from last year which means you know there was obviously a lot of very good they, them guys were all, uh, off obviously very good as 16 year olds you know a lot of them guys were, still, were, were there last year and they've pushed on well they, they've pushed on in a sense that they, they've kind of they've got a few more guys in this year younger lads but but like you know the freak result against Wisconsin just the goals flying in late on you know good performances against Goal, good performances against Mayo which which is great to see that we're able to mix it with them because like population just the sheer numbers that Mayo and Galway have is, is enough to kind of say that you know maybe Leach on paper shouldn't be competing with them at all but the fact of the matter is that they are and that's good but like you know there, there has to be I think you know progression to the point where we're actually getting over the line in these games and when we get our nose in front we're staying in front and that's all down to the kind of work that's been done in clubs you know, I think, and and with the which which are developing pounds up the way that, that that you're developing these kind of players that they're that they're going to be able to you know have the the, the know how and the you know the the skills to be able to stay in games and, and not not skills as such like but you know just that 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 we're we're churning out you know consistently churning out players that are as good as what's in Galway as good as what's in Muscombe as good as what's in Mayo and even Sligo to the extent like Sligo have you know obviously. You know, they're under 20, their minor steps been on the crest of a wave lately. And you know, you, you'd be hoping that Leitrim can kind of match that, you know, and, and in fact, you know, exceed it. We're obviously working off a smaller base, but um, you know, in, in, in theory, that should make things easier in terms of you know, identifying players, retaining players, you know. So you'd be hoping that, 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 that that's something that can feed into the whole longer term planning of it. Like, but no, look at them guys. About, as I remember, I, I seen an interview with Carol Foley there a couple of weeks back, and he just said, you know, they just need that win to get them over the line and and Hopefully that, that can come tonight in the Shield final against Sligo. It'd be great for that that group of lads to get to come away with some silverware. They were beaten in the Shield final, I think, by Roscommon last year. So it would be great to come away. And that was a Roscommon team scoring because Leitrim drew with them, I think, in, in uh, Leitrim drew with them or beat them in Carrick, I think, in, in, in the round robin. So, you know, hopefully Le- them, Leitrim, them young lads can go out and get a win tonight. And it'd be great for them, great for the great reward for their work as a group. And it'd be great platform for them, you know, especially the other lads who are probably springing into under 20s now next year as well. It'd be, it'd be really good for them if they could end, end their season with a, with a piece of silverware. Of course, might, for some, might be their last underage game for the county in terms of the minor competition as well. As you said, they do move on uh, at the end of uh, this season. Whether that's uh, successful or not, tonight's Shield would be a nice little bonus to them. In terms of the uh, the Laurie Mara Cup, of course, the Hurlers out in action this weekend too. Um, they've had a mixed campaign, good results. Uh, I know they had a win last week, but uh, it's been, it's been oh, I suppose, mixed. Is that the best way to describe that for them this year? Yeah, well, I, yeah, well, I suppose looking in on the outside, you'd probably say it was mixed, but I think they, them guys themselves, and and certainly all from Colin, they'll be, they'll be disappointed because you know they done ever so well to to start off on a positive, getting the draw against Monaghan, uh, going down a man, and then you know not 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 to be able to follow that up then in the next round uh, at home to. Uh, I think it was Warwickshire, yeah, War- Warwickshire. I think in, in the Shambo, like that was probably a bit of a setback. And they, you know, sp- I was speaking to Alton Conway after that game. They said we just have to go win the rest of our games. And then, of course, I lost Longford. Then after that, didn't didn't it really compounded matters, and that kind of made, made it very hard for them after that. And um, so, yeah, no, they will, they will have a mixed campaign, yeah. But I suppose, look, at, you know, it's all like I said, it's all about bringing through players as well. And it, it's such a task for them guys when they're they're working off, you know, two clubs essentially, like you know, and. I know there's the pick of the county in those two clubs, but it's a very small base for, for them guys to work off. And, and they, they do 
punch above their weight. I said, Le- I think a league final is probably you know, more than the ladies. You know, getting out of Division Three B be a massive thing for them if they could if they could maintain in Division in Division Three A for a couple of years. It'd give them a, a good springboard for the Laurie Maher. But there's never much between the Laurie Maher sides in any given year, and you know that that's something that that they will take heart of as well. That, you know that they they know they can probably come back next year, be very competitive, and you know those results break the other way. Absolutely, of course. Our main focus on the show today is going to be, and um, now that we've kind of talked through all the inter county action, but it is the return of club football to the county. Um, you've been involved yourself, you've been with Gortletra in the Spring League. Uh, what was your thoughts on, on year campaign and I suppose the Spring League in general? It's nice to kind of get the, the cobwebs off, but it's it's all about this weekend, really, in terms of the start of the championship or the, the league campaign. Oh, it is, yeah, ma- massively. Like, you know, the, the league is what teams are priming themselves for. Like, you know, make no mistake about it. Um, you know, look at we're, we're, we kind of we knew from a, I think a distance back that we were going to have to play a couple of rounds of the, ga- the league without county players, and I think there's probably a bit more of a broader acceptance. I think in clubs that that's going to have to be the case. You know, um, you know, it's it's ha- you know, it goes on in a lot of counties. You know, obviously it, it, for the last couple of years, counties have been looking at different ways of, of, of running it, whereby it's you know, games with more points for county players or, you know, something like that. Leach and kind of have gone the way of separating it with their spring league so the guys have games early in the year. Get As you said, get the cobwebs off, you know, try out different things. And and then, of course, the league proper then is, is where the business end of it is at. Um, I do think it's probably a bit, when you look at Leachman's divisions, 8, 8 and 7, I think it's a good split, but I think it's probably like two teams getting relegated over a league of 8 is, is an awful lot. Like, do you know what I mean? So maybe in the future they might look to one going down and one going up. But um, oh, look, it's, 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 it's a good... I think the league is, is set up very well structurally wise. The Spring League, of course, as you said, yes, and Mary's winning the winning the Spring League there. Um, look, yeah, we, we, we they were very impressive. We played them in the Spring League. They were... I was very impressed with, with St. Mary's. I thought they've, they've really kind of driven on a bit from their their championship winning season last year. They look very physically fit. They look very physically there. Um Alan Flynn, of course, still involved with them and you know, not letting his duties from the awfully backroom team kind of, you know, dilute what's going on with St. Mary's, which is of course really, really positive for them. Like and they they'll be looking to, you know, they're a young side, they're hungry, they're full of fitness, they're full of running. And I think they'll be um they'll be looking to kind of double down on what happened on last year, you know, later in the year when it comes to championship. But no, they'll definitely probably be maybe favourites for the league at the minute. Um and they have a good um they have, a, they have, like I said, they have, a, they have a decent record in league. Anyway, you know, St Mary's are always kind of a, a good league team. They've, uh, I think, they're out first against Ballinamore. So they've, uh, that's a good, that's a, that's a good game for them to kind of put a marker down now on Sunday. Like you know, get, get, you know let everyone know, you know, what their intentions are. So look, they, they're certainly probably front runners at the minute. The way you'd be looking at it, all right. Well, let's hear from James real quickly in terms of uh, what we spoke about last week when I chatted from ahead of that league, uh, Spring League win, and uh, we'll come back. We'll look at the different manager changes in the clubs and the fixtures for the weekend. So I'm joined by James McGrail of County Champions St Mary's. That's got a nice little ring to it, James. Uh, big year for St Mary's last season. Can you live up to the hype? Can you uh, take that trophy back again for a second consecutive season? Um, yeah, it was great. Great last year. Um, great to get a win. Um, get the young lads off the off the mark for with a county title um, at a good young age. Um, to do it second time in a row. It's going. It's going to be hard. Um, it hasn't been done in a long time. I think it was the was it the the great manor team that has done it. The last time it was done. So, you know, there's a lot of good teams out there. Um, we're hoping to do it again. But uh, as they say, there's a. I'd say there's a there's a line ready for us to take us out to the race. So, um, of course, the spring. I didn't actually welcome you to the show. You're very very welcome, obviously, to, to, to the show. But in terms of, I suppose, how the off season's been. I know you're back playing a bit of football in the spring league. All the teams are back, and uh, obviously without the county players. Uh, how has the last couple of months since that win in October been for for you personally? Uh personally, very good. Yeah, just just to get the win um, with the group that we have, and you know, go on then from the the, the county championship to winning a kind of club game you know over in over in over in london um that just brought on just brought it on another few weeks and then you know the game against Torrey strand was probably you know a week after so like you were probably in uh, november then so it just it dragged out the year but like it didn't feel long at all it was just you know you were just you're living off every weekend you know going into the next weekend hoping just to keep it going and you know that was the, the real thing just could we keep it going as long as we could um, fortunately, you know, the Torres Strand bed us, and that was that. But, um, no, it was very good. That no, was very good. 
Tell me a little bit about the London trip, because obviously it's not something that comes up for most inter-county players outside of Connacht, but for club players, it's probably even rarer. Um, how do you prepare for that? Because you're kind of going into a bit of a vacuum. Yeah, um, it was, for the likes of myself, who's been in with a county squad, you know, you've, you've spent nights away, um, you know, with a county group, if you were traveling down south to Waterford or Wexford, or, you know, even if you had to go to London either, um, you'd be away with a group, you know, with a squad. So I was kind of used to that. I knew what was going to be entailed in it. Um, a lot of younger lads didn't. A few lads with the county team would have known what it was like. But um, then again, you're in with your own club mates. It's, it's even different, you know. It's a really tight-knit group. But um, um, it was good. It was a Friday night. Friday, we flew over, uh, stayed the Friday night, and we flew out then Saturday evening, so it was. Um, it was very good, a very enjoyable experience. Um, as you said, yeah, not too many uh, club men will get to experience it, but uh, it was it was very, very good. And to get the win was just the, the blossom on it. Yeah, the, the win is all important, really, when you get to that stage. Uh, because the, the Connick Club Championship, it's kind of something that a lot of people don't give a lot of, an awful lot of thought to until they're maybe... Uh, seven days out from a game when they've won their own county championship and they're thrown into the, the heat of battle at provincial level. How much... You seem to have, a, have that in the back of your minds the whole way through the, the championship campaign last year. Not not saying you expected to win the county uh, or were, were uh, overly um, confident about that, but yeah. you just have, it seemed to always be that, okay, well, this is the path, and if we get to B, to C, to D, uh, the kind of club championship is going to be at the end of that. Um, yeah, no, saying that now, we, we had our eyes firmly on winning that day against Mohol, and we did. And to be honest, if it was, it went the other way, just say Mohol, you'd fully expect Mohol to go over and do the same. Um, you know, they're, they're a quality team, and I think whatever is coming out of Leitrim is well, well capable of going into, into Connacht. Um, um, you know, the game against. Kiernan's, um, they're a good, strong team too. They have a lot of, you know, a lot of good players from a lot of different counties, but, you know, they don't really have that, you know, playing the whole time, all year round, you know, as you would with your club team at home, you know, the, it's, it's, it's harder to, say, get to training in London and stuff like that, you know, than, you know, what you would have at home and the facilities you'd have at home. But we knew that was would help us, but to be playing against a, a, a very high standard of quality of boys over there, you know what I mean? Yeah. In, in terms of, I suppose, that obviously came to a, a close in the semi-final stage, but um, is, is there a feeling that maybe you could have gone on and got to a, a first Leitrim team into a provincial final in over, I think it's 25 years since we've had a team in there before? Yeah, like, the game against Kiernan's, it just elevated us on another level, and you could see from the younger lads, and not just the younger lads, everyone in the whole squad, um, just you know, it was just it was the roller coaster was still going. So you know, the Sligo champions. I know they haven't been bet in Sligo for a long time, um, but still, you know, you we just have that confidence in yourself once you get that far. You know, you you just got to go for it. And um, probably a small bit of inexperience did us in the second half, and that's why you could say Torla Strand are there. They're in Connacht the last. Was it five or six years anyway? At least you know they're trying to get there to the kind of final. They they had it, you know, they had that a little ex bit, bit of experience. Um, it's it's what you need when you run into Connacht, really. But um, you know, it was just a roller coaster for us. Just we you, you felt that you could get there to uh to a kind of final, no problem. You know. Yeah, speaking of roller coasters, I suppose uh, last year was that kind of topsy turvy uh, league campaign into the championship. Um. And a really, really solid performance the whole way through the knockout stages in particular. And you just, you, you came from kind of dark horses coming into the final to win that game probably more comfortably than people probably expected you to. Um, yeah, I'd say, yeah, you'd be right in saying we were dark horses with um, dark horses with just a good team if we got it right. Um, the league final probably against Mohol. You know, you went down all to win that game, and you know, you didn't get the win. And then we did. We got a we got a tough draw with them. You know, the next 
the next week, you know, you're playing in the first round of the championship and that didn't go according to plan either. So, you know, we did have to, we did get our little bit of comeuppance here and there. Um, you know, it set you back a little bit, but, you know, you regrouped, regrouped again. And, you know, probably going down to Bandamore for me would have been the, you know, it, it, set, our, it set our championship, you know, in stone there. Just to, It's just set off our championship. Getting the win down to Bandamore, it's a big thing just because, you know, they're previous county champions and, you know, it's not easy to win down there. But that just, I think, ignited our, I'd say, our championship after a disappointing league final, you could say, and probably the, the following week in the first round of the championship. So, you know, I wouldn't have been a big fan of the, the change of format personally ahead of the championships. It made everything a bit of a nightmare from our point of view, trying to cover games and plan stuff out for weeks ahead. You weren't able to do that. But I really got into it, and that kind of a Sunday night draw of who you're going to play the following week, it really added some kind of um, a, a new kind of buzz that we hadn't seen in the championship before. What was it like from a player's point of view, uh, dealing with that little bit of uncertainty, leaving a pitch on a Saturday night about what the plan was for the week? Um, that's the thing. It's it's, it's exciting. Um, you, you don't really get to plan too much. Um, you kind of have to just... Make so make sure your own your own game plan your own um, strategies are you know up in order and you just kind of have to think about yourself really that your own game plan is going to go there and you know and, and win the game and then you know you kind of have to deal with the other team as you know as you're playing because um, you don't get that much time you don't you don't get three four weeks to um, you know make a try and you know a, a, the big defense against these other teams or anything like that. Um, but it's just, it's as you go. Um, very enjoyable, I would say. Um, you know, uh, I thought like after the league final, we, you didn't want to really want to get Bal uh, Mohol again, but we got them and, you know, we probably got Ballamore, which would have been the top two teams, you know, that everyone would think that year coming through. So, you played probably the two best teams there, so and he got one win out of it. So um we felt we could take on anyone then after that, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, it gives you a bit of confidence playing uh playing the top guys too, you know what I mean? Yeah, it does. It kind of creates that atmosphere of every game is a must win because you don't know who you're gonna get the following week as well. Yeah. Uh, going back to the roller coaster analogy, you've been on this ride a couple of times over the last uh, decade or more um with the club. Uh, we're at that stage where you're creeping up now. The spring league is on. St. Mary's have built up a bit of a, a head of steam through that. Four, uh, four games in, three wins after that opening day draw against Anna Duff. You had that little creaky start, just jolted in against Anna Duff. You built it up through the last through the uh, league games. Now you play uh, Kiltrubbert, who are currently pointless in the league table in the last game this weekend. Um, all things going well. You should qualify for... I'm not even sure if what the final situation is with the Spring League. It's really just about giving lads games. But it must be nice to kind of get that winning feeling from a fairly early part of the season, even though you're, you're shorn of a couple of lads in the, with the county. We've just come back nice and steady. We haven't gone too hard at it yet. Um, we had, you know, we didn't really have any challenge games or anything like that. We just went straight into Anna Duff. Um, we probably were a little bit naive now uh, going in against Anna Duff. And we're very rusty um, and enough, you know, to give us lots of it that day. And I'd say we were lucky enough to get the draw. Um, but then, you know, as you're going on, we got a few of our under-20s back against Banlamore and that um, a good hard game against them. And the same against Aha Willen. But yeah, it's going nice and handy into the, just say, into the, the, the proper league. And uh, hopefully we'll be in a final, um, this is Saturday of the week after we play Kiltubbert, we beat, hopefully we beat them and get the win. And uh, we've been a spring league final. Um, it's just Grant playing another final and just see how it goes from there, you know? Yeah, going on form, I think you'd have to say you'd be fair if it's going into that tie with Kiltubbert this weekend. You're top of the table. They're still pointless at the bottom. In, in terms of the, the spring league last year, we saw a couple of lads breaking into that team in the absence of those county players. Anyone kind of caught the eye this year? Um, I know Ben Gokin was impressive in the, the county yeah. final last year. I'm sure he's been part of the plans. But anyone else that's caught your eye as, a, as kind of a senior member of the squad? Um, yeah, Ben would be there, definitely. I haven't played with Ben. He's only actually coming in. And, yeah, he has the he has all the ability there to um, 
to uh, come into the team. Um, you also have uh, be Sam Barnes. Um, he's got an injury at the moment, but he's he has started well at the uh, at the start of the spring league. Um, I think he's out for a few weeks, but he is he's been doing very well. Um, oh, there's a number of young fellas there. If they're just um, there's nearly a conveyor belt of them coming through. So if they stick at it, you know, it's a long year. There's lots of boys going to be getting injured. Um, and it's just about getting their chance to get in there. And that's really it. There's 22 clubs. A little bit jealous now listening to your conveyor belt chat here at the moment in the county. But in terms of the talent that's coming through the club, obviously there's been there's been dominance at some age grades the whole way up through the, the, the club as well last year. Phenomenal year for the club at all levels last year. Male, female, um, senior, junior, it didn't seem to matter. You were capable of, of winning the championships last year. Um, does Lightning strike twice? Can you have that same level of success this year? I know I kind of already chatted about this a bit, but like, yeah. can, can you deliver a, a better year than last year? Is that even possible? Well, you'd be hoping to, but it's very... You know, it's a uh, it's easier saying it than doing it. Um, you know, you you kind of showed your hand last year of what your what your team is about, and you know, people, you know, teams teams, you know, they focus in on that. You know, you're they they know how to play against you and stuff like that. So, um, you know, it's going to be very hard. Um, but saying that, you know, you, you're going to try your best to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, we've skirted around the issue as well of uh, of age and seniority in the dressing room. I don't really want to talk to you about it because it's too simple and too easy to focus on. Uh, but how sick are you of of that even being a discussion? Like you're wrapping up to play for another year and even people thinking, oh, other lads his age have dropped out. You're still playing. You're still playing a, a pivotal role in that squad. How how hard is it or how easy is it to kind of dust the boots off in, a, in January and come back out to that winter slog? Well, I tell you, it was harder every year when you don't win the county championship. So it's uh, it was easier actually this year. You know, some boys uh, like uh, leaving on a high, but um, I have been injured there for I'd say three years, probably in my you know early early thirties. So um, you know, I lost a few years there, and I always said to myself, if I ever got back playing, um, you know, I'd try and go as long as I could as injury free and as long as you're you're able to you're make the cut, you know what I mean? Um but uh no yeah definitely keep it going for as long as I can. Um no you have that in your own head but you know there's younger lads coming through there and I'd say soon enough I'll be slowly pushed aside, you know what I mean? <laughs> well off air you talked briefly about being part of the panel in two thousand seven when St Mary's won I think the second last championship before last year and how much has that change room changed from that 2007 when you were a young teenager yeah. uh, versus now when you're looking at the teenagers? Like, I don't even think 2007 Twitter wasn't even a thing. Uh, never mind Instagram or TikTok or whatever they're, the kids are on these days. Um, how different is the mentality in the dressing room from what you would have been used to when you were that age? It's um, yeah, you had a lot. You had a lot more, or uh, just say more senior players with an age bracket, I'd say between between 25 and 33, I'd say, which would be, you know, your standard in your um, your senior team nearly. Um, at the moment, it's probably even younger than that for, you know, you have a few lads that are over 30, but I'd say the most bracket is probably under 23. Um, but the saying the under, what I would have been at 18 back then, um, like these lads are way ahead of where we were in 2007, as in the younger lads now are way more advanced in in everything. So they are compared to what we were in 2007. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, like in terms of are you talking about conditioning, yeah, conditioning, their conditioning, everything, their play, it's 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 way it's far more advanced than it was in 2007. You know what I mean? Are you feeling the pressure? Uh, under pressure, yeah. There's look, you still need a few older lads there to hold the hold the team together. Um, you seen there, you had Danny Beck and Mohull. You have you know Liam Ferguson, Wayne McKeown and Van Lamora. You always need uh, a few older lads and you know a good few young lads around them. And then you know what I mean. 
I have no doubt you're going to get a bit of a smack at some game for naming off some of those boys and putting them in the older lads category. Listen, James, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you. Congratulations on a fine season last year. It's great to get the the podcast season up and running ahead of the start of the the league campaign. I think we just double-checked the score or the the fixtures. Probably the 21st is the week. We're in a bit of a vacuum at the moment. We expect the fixtures to be out in the next few days at the time of, uh, of chat to you. We don't have that information. Before I let you go, Talton Cup starts next week. Uh, have you followed the county side at all this year? Uh, what's your thoughts on the draw? Yeah, um, it's a good draw. I think it's um, it's a hard group. They're a very evenly, evenly enough matched. I presume Fermanagh obviously would be the, the top team in it, but other than that, I think Leitrim can go and they can beat Antrim and they can beat Wexford, no problem. And same for Manor, the top team, uh, you know, we have a good record in Park Sean there. So um, I think that's our home game. Um, you know, anything is possible. I think, you know, they're, 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 they're well capable of getting out of that group, no problem. Absolutely. Well, listen, James, best of luck at the weekend against Kiltorbert and for whatever the rest of the Spring League holds and, of course, into the Championship and League campaigns later in the summer with St Mary's. The defending champions, will they be the champions in six months' time? time? Oh, <laughs> exactly. James, thanks a million for joining me. All right. Thank you, Rafi. All right. A lot of change around the county this year. We've had some of the same managers, but there have been changes in a few clubs. I'm just going to run a list of the, the managerial changes at the bottom of the screen. But, of course, starting, again, we might as well start with yourself and Gort Letra. There's a change there as well. Um, it, but it's a, a familiar face back in the dugout for Gort Letra. Yeah, yeah. Sean Hines back involved uh, with us here in Gort Letra. Yeah, and he's got um, Mark Degnan involved with him as well. Yeah, so, like, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a glorified in-house management team for us. Like, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, no, look at... Um, we're kind of, look, it's been a great year for us so far. Like, you no, know, training's been very, very good. Um have to say, look at Spring League. Like I said, I suppose one issue where we would have had with Spring League is, which of course a lot of guys have as well, is that you know you pick up a few knocks here and there. You know, guys might not always be available because they're trying to save their days and that for you know save their working their, their working days and things like that for later in the year when they need them. So you're kind of playing different teams every every, every day you go, but that's good because lads get chances and lads get runs and that's what the league, that's what the Spring League is really about. Like you know, get, giving lads games, getting games them into the legs. So um, no, we're very happy with how it's been going like so far, and it's great to have you know Sean and Mark back and. Look, hopefully we can drive it on later in the summer. And looking down through the managerial changes, let's go uh, from the championship point of view, and we'll take the senior teams first. Uh, four four clubs with new managers this year. Ray Logan comes into Ballinamore. Tommy and Joe McCormack will be familiar to most Leitrim fans, but he's Tommy Joe's son. Obviously, he's with him now in FINA this season. Glenn Young back in Glencar Manor. Of course, he's got four titles in his back pocket as well. Three titles, one week final uh, with Glencar Manor in two previous stints at the club and Sean Hines back. So uh, while they might be new managers, they're definitely not new faces to the fans in Leitrim GA. Yeah, no, definitely not. Like, I think, um, you know, Tommy and Joe McCormick, of course, uh, you know, really, really well known. And they've, they've, they've been there and done it. They've got the CV from Aha Willen, from, from Riley, from Mohul, you know. So, you know, they are definitely, obviously, they, they, they could be a really a really good match there with Fina. And, you know, Fina, obviously, are a team that, you know, or we're in a whisker or getting to a county final last year, like you know, kick of a ball and a penalty shootout. So, like, they're a team that can really maybe you know get, get everyone fit on the field. You know, obviously, you no know, Ryan Ryan O'Rourke is a big risk for them, but if, if they can get everyone fit on the field later in the summer, they'll be a really a, a really dangerous threat. Um, Glenn Young, as I said, yeah, of course, Manor are kind of looking back to the future kind of with Manor, but like Manor, I suppose a lot of people would say are uh, are in the somewhat. The, the early throws of a rebuild, like and Glenn Young, would be a great man, kind of oversee that and, and bring some of them younger guys that they've, that they've got coming up now, integrate them into the team, and they've got a good mix there of experience too. You know, the likes of, you know, Bruno McDonald, Levin Sweeney, you know, Connor Dolan, them, you know, them, the McDonalds, they're they're all still there, like you know, so like Manor probably have a really good balance in, in their squad, I, I would think. And um, who else did you say there? Sorry, was that was the, was the um, uh, Ray Logan. Yes, of course. Yeah, there's Ballinamore got got gone gone in house as well. Like yeah, no, that's you know probably Ballinamore looking at like you said they've had some you know outside managers for a while and they've had success and they're maybe look, looking back inside now again. So and Ballinamore, of course, they've got a, a new pitch on the way too or a new surface. So they they're going to be looking to kind of you know I suppose double back down on their um double back down on where they were a couple of years ago. Of course, beating finalists and then winning one and they'll probably be looking to get back there again. They've, they've a lot of guys maybe who aren't. You know, involved with 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 the county setup that would have been in the past, maybe through injury or through through other reasons. So they're probably going to be have a a reasonably strong hand come the end of the season or come championship time as well. Yeah. 
Of course, uh, six other teams in the senior championship grade this year, uh, all with experienced managers and uh, past their first year uh, with the club. But I can't see the longest serving of them. His fourth season with Drummer Hare, Peter Pryor, he is, of course, Ballinamore native. Uh, he's in with Dietrich Games for his third season, semi finalists in both of the first two years. Can they go one step further? We'll see later in the summer. Alan Flynn back from the crack. As you mentioned, it's part of the Offaly backroom team at the moment, uh, but also Dublin down with uh, his role in St. Mary's. He's back for another crack that he's obviously tuned from in Galway. Eamon O'Hara back in Mohol after their county final defeat last year. He has uh, hopefully going to put, from his, their point of view, hopefully put uh, the uh, right to wrong, or wrongs to right this year, maybe take home another senior championship. That would be their goal. Terence Reynolds up with Ockham Shield, of course, from Carry Allen. Uh, he will be in charge of... Uh, of Sheelan this year and Colin Murphy of Canoli for Mana uh, is back in charge of Aha Willen this year. So um good news to see the caliber of maybe the experience of Alan Flynn and Eamon O'Hara um and Porter Clancy was obviously involved with, with with Sligo um to have that kind of experience in this grade. In your what do you think there? Ah yeah I I'd say so like you know even going back a couple of years ago I remember you know speaking to Dominic Corgan he was training band the more time and he felt like the standard was as good as as he get anywhere, like you know, and, and Aaron O'Hara has, has said that re- repeatedly last year in post match interviews. You know, that, that that the standard is, is is good, and you have to be on it every day you go out because if you're not, some team is going to catch you, like you know. So that's probably good from that point of view, and and the fact that you know there's there's a lot of guys there going into year year three and year four with, with, with teams shows that they're, that they're there, you know, with, with the end goal of developing players, bringing lads through and, and, and trying to, you know, build something long term. It's not just a, an in and out job or a quick fix. So that, that's really good to see as well. Like, you know, that there, there is, like clubs are kind of going with consistency, which is kind of very important as well. Same story in the intermediate grade. Three t- three coaches in their third year with teams, uh, Seamus Mallon and Borna Kula, Richard McTiernan and Drum Kieran, and also Aidan Dockery, who's first year solo. He was joint manager for the last two seasons with the uh, Kira McTagg, but he's on his own this year. Good team behind him, but he is that the main man this year. So those three clubs have gone for experience. Niall Malidi back at Carrie Gallon, and Liam Higgins in his second year with Aha Vass. Uh, Joe Cox, of course, known to everyone on the county. Um, he's in with Anna Duff for his second year in this term. And James Flynn, after taking up the reins midway through, through last year, his first full season, but his second year uh, with the club. A couple of new faces there. Liam Gunmartin. Um, he's back at the helm at Melbourne Gales. I know he's been part of that backroom team for a while, uh, but now he's back in charge. Fergal Harton comes in uh, to Drumroy and Peter Clark comes in to Ballon um from Gauna and Lisna Ski and Fermanagh, respectively. So um, some new faces in the in the league. Again, some not so uh, new, but uh, returning faces to managerial positions. Yeah, um, it's kind of almost kind of mirror image there of the, of, the, of the senior grade, you know, broadly similar in terms of, you know, you've got a lot of guys, you know, stick, stick, a lot of guys stick, stick and wait and a couple of clubs maybe who are maybe coming off cycles of having maybe managers in place for three or four years, you know, look, look, looking to freshen up a little bit. So yeah, no, it's, it's broadly similar there, Brett, I have to say, and like that, you know, you, you got, you've got guys there who, bit like, like Joe Cox there, you know, James Flynn, like both them guys are going to be well fit to get a tune out of, the, of the, their respective clubs. They, they're they're homegrown guys that have been there and done it in one jersey. So they're going to be looking to get get twists out of their clubs. And Liam Gilmartin, of course, been around a long time in Melbourne Gales as well. And and like that, they they'll rise to the challenge, no doubt. You know, I have a funny feeling that Melbourne Gales could be a team to watch this year. They're they're definitely not going to be um, you know bubbling under for too long either. They've got lots of youth coming through there the last couple of years too. So they'll be a team to watch there on as well. I feel. I think the way they went down last year as well, they'll have a bit of a um, a lump in their throat and a kind of a belief that maybe they didn't deserve to be relegated. So they'll be itching to get back to the top table of the championship when that does roll out in a couple of months' time. Junior, just to complete the grade, three new appointments in all three junior sides. Uh, Aidan Rudden comes in and Clune, Sean Pearson in Esland. He's from Gowna originally and Tom Riley. Uh, back involved with Glen Farr and Kilty Clarer. So, uh, interesting to see who comes out of that grade uh, this year. Of course, second teams in that competition as well. So, uh, teams looking to come out of that. But back to the league action. Um, let's look at the specific fixtures over the weekend. Um, I might just uh, flash them up on the screen here. If you give me a second, I can get them up here. There we go. Um, so, there's the actual fixtures for the weekend. Tonight, tonight of course, we mentioned Balne Glaret against Drummer Heron. That kicks off the, the league season. Let me just zoom in. So you can read it a little bit easier. But uh, your thoughts on, on that game and in terms of how it's going to go? Drummond here, obviously, a senior championship side up against Ballon de Glare, who ranked intermediate in the championship. 
Yeah, but um, that's a on Banagher side. You know, they, they, they give them lots of it at home too, and it, it's it's not it's not quite a neighbour and local derby, but they're not too far away from other. So the like both sides want to start off on a, on a, on a on a good foot because I think you know they, they both be maybe, maybe thinking of you know that if designs and finishing high up the table, certainly from Harris case, they, they'd probably be thinking about trying to get it, get get out of Division Two, but. Um, but like yeah, look at that's that's a Friday night game. So you know if Martin Feeney isn't around for some hair, then that's a that's a that's a that's a big player kind of da- gone for them. Like you know, so it, it depends. What, I presume he won't be playing tonight if, if each of them are hurling tomorrow. So um, yeah, that's a big one there. You be, I, that could be a tight game. It could be closer than people think. But um, you know, Drum of Hare, of course, you know we'd we'll be familiar with them. We'd have played them a lot. You know when we were down intermediate there in the last couple of years. You know lots of dangerous players there. James Clancy, Gary Fowley, you know Jamie Collins are real kind of driving force for that Drum of Hare side too. But Van der Glare are, are you know plenty capable as well, and 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 they're recent intermediate finalists too. So they've definitely got a bit about them and. You know, it's, it, for, I suppose for clubs like Van Glare, it's all about trying to bring you know, whatever young guys they have coming through. They might have maybe Manny in a given year and then they might get four or five. It's all about trying to keep, retain and keep those guys involved. So look at, they'd be looking to start off the year uh, you know, on, in, in a good way. The new management there, as you alluded to, Brefney, you know, Paul Clancy is there, you know, t- consistent ticking with Drummer here the last while. But you know, could go either way, hard to call it. But it, I'd say if, 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 if Drummer here are, are missing a couple, Van Glare will, will be right in that game down to the very end. And there's always a bit of bite in that particular fixture as well. We've had a couple of uh, uh, good humdingers in those games in recent seasons. So uh, good. if you've got nothing else going on this evening and you're not going to the minor match, it might be the worst shot to, to get along to that. Uh, Sunday then, Sunday afternoon sees the rest of the games. Of course, no games tomorrow because the hurlers and footballers both in action. Division 1 sees Ockle versus Muggle, Ockle versus Leach and Gale, St Mary's Clotard versus Baltimore Shona Hestens, and Glencar Manor travel to Fina St Collins for their opening game. Of course, they were the Spring League finalists. They were uh, beaten in that final by St. Mary's. But uh, they've shown a bit of promise in the early season. Can they carry that into the, the league form? Yeah, I, I, I would imagine so. Now, now look, at the, they are going to be missing a, a lot of guys in terms of, you know, I presume a lot of the county players, are all. I presume all the county players can't play tomorrow. I'm, I'm not sure, Brefney, if, uh, if guys who aren't on the 26th, on Saturday can play on Sunday. Uh, I, I know maybe you know better than me, but I, I don't. But even at, even if even if they can, St Mary's are probably going to be down a lot of guys in, in that regard. You know, in terms of you know Mark Diffley certainly and Paul Keeney. You know, they're two big misses for them. You know, Balmore maybe not as adversely impacted in terms of the county setup at the minute. So you know, it could be a good time for Balmore to get St Mary's. But St Mary's, I would expect. You know, they've lots of strength and depth there. Um, they're coming off, you know, some really impressive score, racking up some really impressive scores in the spring league. So, you know, good time for Ballymore to get them, maybe. But you never know. St Mary's at home as well. They'll be, they'll be well up for that. Yeah, of course. Uh, Ahoy, the Leach and Gales, Ock and Sheila Mull. Ock and Sheila back in Division One senior football. Um, it's a big ask to put them up against Mull. Can they hope and pray that maybe Mull missing a few through the county commitments that they might catch them on the hop? Or is what can we expect from that fixture? Well, I think that's the, the more than the more than the other way around. Yeah, it's probably a great time for any side that doesn't have that many county players. You know, it's it's a great time to get get, get a team that has maybe five or six because they're going to be down five or six starters. You have got to look at it that way. But I suppose for for clubs like Mohol and St Mary's that have you know good squad depth and and, and a good pick, you know. This can nearly be just as bad. It cuts the other way because you've got guys that want to get in and want to get a jersey, and and you know they, they're not going to be going to be pulling punches, you know, in, in that regard too. But yeah, as you said, look at Ock and Sheila. Don't get me wrong, they're on merit, you know, absolutely, totally, they're on merit. Like you know, the league, league doesn't lie, as they say, and you know they were worthy winners in the media championship last year. But um, look at that. They're apparently they're, they're they're down a few guys too due to travel and, and long term injuries as well, and and that's never easy, you know, to try and achieve that level of consistency that you want when you, when when that, when, that, when you're down guys like that. So look, it could be a to- could, could be a baptism of fire for Ackney Shield in the league, but um, you never know. As you said, you know, Mohol short a few regulars, you know, it could be could be could be a bit more competitive than people might think. Yeah, of course, uh, St Mary's Ballinamore is probably the, the the most attractive tie it around in terms of a neutral who might wander to a game. Um, your thoughts on that? Of course, both teams have been there thereabouts for the last few seasons. Yeah, no, you you can you hit the nail on the head there exactly. Yeah, so you're kind of you know, if you're looking at two teams that are, you're probably going to be saying are right near the top of the top of the tree. Like that, that's probably if if you are at, at, if you if if you're at a loose end at Sunday lunchtime, yeah, you, you probably take it down along to that one. I think the Leitrim Gales are willing game too is you know a very interesting game there too as well because like that Leitrim Gales will have a lot of guys hurdle on Saturday. You know, um, oh, well, and obviously they're 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 main men in, in terms of you know Mark Mark Plunk and Pierce Dolan. They're up each on Saturday too. So both those sides are going to be probably down a few key guys and key areas. So that could be a real leveler there. I'd be expecting a tight game of that one as well. Yeah, moving on to Division Two. If we move down a little bit here on the fixture list, um, three games of course one being played tonight. So three remain for Sunday afternoon. I've asked Melvin Gales. 
Anna Duff versus Kilt Robert and Alan Gales versus Carrie Gallen. Um, what's what comes out with you there? Maybe Anna Duff, Kilt Robert, that potentially could be a, a big one. Both had good campaigns last year, uh, threatened to, to challenge for the intermediate championship, didn't quite pull it off in the end. Yeah, no, there there are two teams we ran up against actually in, in the spring league. Yeah, and we 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 had two kind of close enough games with both of them lost. Um, beat Kiltobert like yeah so and we probably there probably wasn't much in either either of those games really like you know so they're probably there are two sides that are probably built it nicely you know Kiltobert you know they you know they've got the two McQueenie guys inside there Danny and um, Danny and Barry and, and they're kind of a, a main source of their, of their, of their scores like and, and I don't feel when we played them they were experimenting a little bit you know they, they obviously they've, you know, Darren Cops is obviously a, a real talent like you know and he's been getting lots of games for them at centre forward and Jack Hughes is a big, a big guy edge of the square too so like they've got they're probably a little bit more kind of you know you know, probably a little bit further on, I would say maybe than the, the Kiltober, but Kiltober are there, there, but there, thereabouts all the time too. You know, in a Division Two, now they're up from Division Three last results in Division Three, so Kiltober will be looking to consolidate, maybe finish top half. And if, if they're within, if they're within a shout of a, a top two place but with, with a game or two to go, I think you know Kiltober that momentum will serve them well. But and if you would you would imagine, you know, looking at that league table, they they would be having designs of getting back into Division One, like certainly, you know, when you when, when you you know. Themselves, Achnashilan were kind of there, thereabouts in the tail end of the intermediate championship last year, and and I'd also be looking up to Achnashilan now in Division One and thinking, well, you know, we could be there as well. So certainly, I would think that that's probably the standout game there on Sunday for for, for my money anyway, for definite. Totally two even very evenly matched teams, and should be a good one. In terms of Division Three, I know where your attention will be. Uh, it'll be in uh, in Cornegiha for the visit of Clune and na- near neighbours as well. Always adds a little bit of a extra touch to it. Uh, Bornacula versus Eston uh, and Drum Kieran Drum Riley, the other two fixtures. But uh, if you weren't going to be in Gortletcha, which of the other two would you have your eye on? Um, I'd probably go. I'd probably go over to the Bornacula cool Eston game if it wasn't if it wasn't going to be in Gortletcha. Yeah, there's, a, there's actually a lot of local derbies there in uh, in, in Division Three when, when you look around it. Like, yeah, no, definitely look at. And I suppose look at we're, we're probably a bit of an outlier there, and that we're we're a senior championship team. We're in Division Three, but look at we're there based on the results of last year, and, and that's that's fair game. Like, you're not really you can, you can say about that. We are where we are, but look, we obviously look at yeah, look at Bornacula cool Eston could go either way as well. You know, I see Bornacula cool have had some good results in the. In, in, in the spring league, Eston, of course, can fire and don't think into the spring league, so they'll be kind of you know, it's hard to know whereabouts they're at. But players, Connor Byrne will be hurling, of course, on Saturday, so whether he can play on Sunday, unsure. But like Sean Pearson, of course, was loads of experience, you know, of course, involved in get with um Gary Dunho and Aha Willem back in 2014. He's involved with Eston there now, so he'll be looking to get a tune out of them. And they'll be kind of you know, you'd be, you'd be imagining they, they'll be thinking they can go over to Bornacula and maybe upset the apple cart early on. Um, Ourselves and Clune, yeah, that'll be a good one. <laughs> All right, lots of lots of close connections there on both sides, and of course, the ladies amalgamated as well. So I'd expect maybe a, a fairly decent crowd in uh, in Carnegie on Saturday for that one. And then some Kieran's and Riley, yeah, yeah, again, you know, some Kieran, you know, we're probably will be looking at themselves, thinking, you know, we're probably shouldn't be in Division Three of the leagues. So they they will probably be looking to start strong there again. And some Riley, yeah, again, a couple of young guys coming through in the last couple of years too, but they've probably lost a couple of guys as well, you know, to immigration and things like that. So. Remains to be seen what sort of what sort of ways and Riley are, are setting up, but um, hard to know. They to travel up to Dom Kieran, Dom Kieran, you know, a bit of a crest of a wave up there too. You know, they're 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 a club that's lots of lots of development facility and facilities work going on, so that can kind of that can give everyone in the club a lift. So if Dom Kieran are kind of on it, and, and and you'd expect them to to pick up a win there, maybe at four o'clock on Sunday. It's a later game, but um, you know, three two local derbies there and a and a an interesting game with Dom Kieran and Dom Riley too. So there, there, there's there's value to be had all over. It's not all about Division One, Brefney. Uh, oh no, I agree with you 100. In terms of uh, that, that's the the preview or the preview of the league action over the weekend. So just to finish off the show, we might come back to uh, the main focus of the weekend, which will undoubtedly be on the Moran side uh, playing and hosting for Mana in Park Show McDermott. Of course, a big crowd expected for the game. What's your expectation out of the game? Can we cause a surprise? Can we beat the 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 form guide and 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 take uh, the win against Fermana? Think we can, yeah. No, I'm not just saying that because you know this is a, a Legion J podcast, right? And that, no, I honestly think we can. Um, I suppose where from Anna Dangerous, you no, know, they're, they're big in the middle of the field, you know. Uh, Ryan Jones, uh, they're they, you know, operating around there, he'd be no stranger to anyone around Leitrim anywhere for sure. They're they've got some very handy forwards, you know, some young forwards, Josh Largo Ellis, uh, Darren McGurn, and you know, 
they're, them guys are, are kind of big, strong, physical guys, love to attack the ball, love to run at teams. Ulton Kellum as well. You know, I was really impressed with some of Fermanagh's forward play during the league, just even watching highlights of them in League Sunday. You know, I'm really impressed with some of the some 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 of them younger players that, that, that they're bringing through. And of course, you've got the likes of Sean Quigley there as well. You know, the 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 evergreen artist that is Sean Quigley and the things he can do with the football. So look at I think the key to the game is going to be trying to win midfield. Um, on both sides of the ball and I think I think we have the backs to kind of it's going to be a really good test there for you know, the likes of Mark Diffley Conor Ennis if he's fit you know um, Paddy Maguire of course you know always gets the tough assignments never comes off too bad in any of them like so um, I'd, be, I'd be I'd be hoping that you know that, that um, we have the backs to notify their forwards if we can keep if we can keep it keep it keep it score for score you know get the, you know, and, and take our chances like we've seen some different last week Barry McNulty in, on top of the right and he caused havoc in there in the first half you know really clever and a lot expected of him he's only a, he's only a Gosling like, you got to remember that too but um, I honestly think if we, if we if we can be a bit more if we can up the conversion rate in our chances and, and keep their keep their main men quiet I think it, it, it will be a cracker of a game I think we will be we should be in theory you'd be hoping that each can be right in that game you know going down the stretch of course anything can happen Darren thanks so much for joining me give me your uh, Friday afternoon to have a chat all things lead from GA I'm sure it won't be that long before we're chatting to you again and of course the very best of luck to you in your uh, your own game on Sunday afternoon no problem Refrey. thanks very much